Did you know that the distance between Morocco and Spain is just over 14 kilometers? Despite that small distance, we still don't have a bridge connecting the two countries. So why exactly do governments not want Africa and Europe to be connected by a bridge? The idea of constructing a bridge with a length of 13 kilometers is easy and does not appear to be entirely impossible to modern engineers. For instance, the bridge that was recently opened between the Kuban and the Crimean Peninsula spans nearly 20 kilometers. Similarly, there are bridges in China that are 40-50 kilometers long or even longer, without counting overpasses over deserts or swampy areas of which there are also numerous in China, the longest bridge over water currently in use is 56 kilometers long. This bridge connects Hong Kong and Macau, the former colonies of Portugal and Great Britain respectively. So why isn't there a bridge between Africa and Europe then? Well, the reality of such a feat is far more complex than many realize. The difficulties in constructing such a bridge are numerous and include environmental, political and economic challenges. To start with, there are the environmental concerns. The Mediterranean Sea is very deep in certain areas, and the cost of constructing a bridge across this large expanse of water would be astronomical. In addition, the bridge would need to be strong enough to withstand the strong winds and waves of the sea, which would require large amounts of steel and other materials to construct. Furthermore, any construction project of this magnitude would likely have an impact on the environment, including the disruption of local ecosystems and the displacement of marine life. The political challenges are also significant. First, there is the issue of sovereignty. Countries on both sides of the Mediterranean would need to agree to the construction of the bridge, and it is highly unlikely that all countries would agree to such a proposal. In addition, international funding would be necessary to finance such a project, and it is unlikely that all countries involved would be willing to contribute the necessary funds. Finally, there are the economic challenges. The construction of a bridge would be a massive undertaking and would require large sums of money which could be difficult to raise. In addition, the long-term maintenance of the bridge would be expensive. It is uncertain whether or not the bridge would generate enough revenue to cover these costs. Lastly, the construction of a bridge connecting Africa and Europe is a highly ambitious project and would require overcoming numerous environmental, political and economic challenges. While it may be a dream for many, the reality of such a feat is far more complex than it appears. Since the first bilateral agreement between the Kingdom of Morocco and Spain, along with the European Commission and the Economic Commission for Africa, was signed, there has been continued discussion about the establishment of a fixed link between Europe and Africa. Despite what may appear to be an abundance of technical paperwork, these lofty plans have actually only yielded meager results and never truly took off, despite the tremendous political will of the majority of the players. There are still many unanswered questions, such as the viability of the underlying business idea and the most effective strategy for connecting the two continents. At first, it was thought that a massive 16-mile bridge would be the best option. However, more recently, most experts seem to prefer the tunnel option. The Strait's excessive depths is the biggest challenge to the bridge proposal. The shallowest crossing is some 300 meters, which is deeper than the deepest existing underwater tunnel, Eiksund, Norway, 287 meters below. And the shortest route across dips to 900 meters, so you can of course slightly deviate towards the west where the bottom rises to the surface. However, even in this scenario, when the strait's width has been enlarged to 25 kilometers, you will still need to install supports that are 300 meters deep. Multi-directional currents present another challenge, making it extremely difficult for engineers and hydraulic engineers to determine the resistance of the structure. As a result, the bridge is considered extremely complex structurally, and the project is ambitious to the point of impracticality. Other major factors for this bridge are the cost of several billions of dollars, and will the future traffic justify the cost and the construction? Security is also a factor for illegal migrants, invasions, terrorism, and how ships will pass underneath. At both ends of the bridge, a set of international roads, customs, police, and tunnels, and social business and aesthetic buildings will need to be set up. Finally, the politics diplomacy of Morocco and Spain will need to be settled. Now, there was another notion, and it was based on the premise that you can construct a road underneath the water where it is difficult to build a bridge over it. The European Tunnel, which connects France and Great Britain and passes through the English Channel, is the most well-known tunnel with comparable features, and it is longer, at 51 kilometers. So, is this the answer? Well, not really. 
tunnels are more expensive and even less reliable. Construction at the current stage of technological development is also impossible due to Azores Gibraltar Fault, which runs between Africa and Europe, along the ocean floor in this very place. Another challenge is the difficulties with an incredibly hard rock. Once engineers in Spain have been given the go-ahead to design the tunnel, but they were compelled to backtrack on the plan due to the difficulty of working with the seabed's base. While these options sound reasonable, there were some really absurd suggestions in the past. One of them was the Atlantropa project. The Atlantropa project was an ambitious plan to dam the Mediterranean Sea and create a hydroelectric power station proposed in the 1920s by German engineer Hermann Sorgel. And the project would have had far-reaching consequences for the land and the people living around the Mediterranean. The project aimed to create a massive hydroelectric power station in the Strait of Gibraltar. This would allow vast amounts of energy to be generated from the differences in water levels between the Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea. The project also envisioned the creation of a set of dams and canals, allowing for the regulation of the water levels. These dams across the Strait of Gibraltar, the Dardanelles, and eventually between Sicily and Tunisia would serve as the foundation for the new supercontinent, each containing massive hydroelectric power plants. In addition to the energy benefits, Sorgel believed that project would also have beneficial effects for agriculture, as it would allow for new land to be reclaimed from the sea. He argued that this would create much-needed jobs and boost the economy of the Mediterranean region. Sorgel's plan may seem ridiculous to us now, but at the time, architects, engineers, politicians, and journalists all took it seriously. Numerous architectural plans for future cities, dams, and bridges, as well as letters of support and hundreds of articles about the project that appeared in the German and international popular press, as well as in specialized engineering and geographical magazines, can all be found in the extensive Atlantropa archive at the Deutsche Museum in Munich. Atlantropa's vision of achieving world peace through a straightforward scientific solution rather than through politics and diplomacy was what made it so appealing. A massive energy network that would emanate from the enormous hydroelectric plant in the Gibraltar Dam and supply electricity to all of Europe and Africa would hold Atlantropa together. An autonomous body would be in charge of the power plant and have the authority to cut off the energy supply to any nation that threatened international harmony. Additionally, Sorgel estimated that each nation would have to invest so much money and manpower in the creation of the supercontinent that none would have enough to finance a war. Sorgel committed a significant portion of his effort to the project's promotion and diffusion through the popular press, radio programs, films, lectures, exhibitions, even poetry, and Atlantropa Symphony. He did this because he believed in the European people and their yearning for peace. He thought that the widespread support would allow him to get the support of legislators. Unfortunately, the essential cooperation between nation-states always seemed even more utopian in the eyes of his contemporaries than the immense technological dimensions of Atlantropa. The project was highly controversial, with critics warning of the potential environmental damage as well as the impact it could have on the Mediterranean's fragile ecosystem. Others pointed out the enormous cost of such a project, as well as the economic and political instability it would bring to the region. Despite this opposition, Sorgel continued to push the project throughout his life, but it never progressed beyond the planning stages. While there is no indication that a link from Africa to Spain will be built, it is a logical step and there is a chance that something will appear sooner or later. According to projections, Africa will be one of the world's fastest developing regions in the coming decades. With this kind of growth, a bridge or tunnel connecting the two continents will become increasingly important.